Hello there, everyone. My name is Zam Morgan. I am your official commentator here for ZCW. And right now, we have Dean Ambrose making his way down the ring. Probably to get something off of his mind, I presume. I know that he's got a special tag team match in the main event when he teams up with Kota Ibushi to take on the current ZCW Titan Champions and Baron Corbin and Darren Payne later on tonight. So my thoughts is he's probably addressing the whole Callahan situation. Dean Ambrose calling out Sammy Callahan, the current ZCW Pride Champion. Also the man you heard uh, Ambrose say, the man that took him out at takedown. But wait a minute! That's not Callahan, but that's that's Ambrose's partner for later on tonight. That's Kota Ibushi. And what in the world? Oh! A kick to the back of the head! They're now setting him up for the sit-out! Last right power bomb. We got to remember Ambrose did probably unintentionally cost Kota Ibushi the chance at the ZCW Pride Championship. So this was just a little bit a uh, measure of revenge for Kota. But those two are going to be teaming up in our main event later. How are those two going to coexist? Well, here we go with our first match tonight. The 
Alex Tyson Kid prepares to go one on one with Luca Khan. And it's been a while since we've seen Tyson Kid here on uh, CCW television. I know he's looking to make a great impression here tonight as he goes up against the man who will be facing Finn Balor at Turmoil. And you know Tyson Kidd is definitely looking to stop the momentum of Luka Khan going into that match. Tyson Kidd in our opening contest here tonight. The referee's the bell. Here we go, and Luka Khan already on the uh, on the uh, on the attack here, striking away at Tyson Kidd. Kicks, trying to chop Tyson Kidd down, but Kidd was able to catch one of them. Now delivering some strikes of his own. Khan coming back now. Punches to the head from Luka Khan. Tyson Kidd now gonna Irish whip him off the ropes here. Now Tyson Kidd just telling Luka Khan to bring it on here. And Luka Khan trying to do something, but Tyson Kidd caught him with a single leg drop kick. Kidd now in control. It's Khan trying to get back to his feet. Kid is definitely definitely making it very difficult for him to catch his breath. Warm smash into the corner. Now Tyson Kid snap suplex floats over into the pin. That's only good for a one count. Tyson Kid now. Nice neck snap there. And so far has kept Luke Khan grounded. Luka Khan doesn't have an answer for anything that Tyson Kidd is dishing out. Oh, except for that boot to the head there. This might be what Luka Khan needed. But again, Tyson Kidd, very quick on his feet, was able to take Luka Khan off of the middle rope. Now Tyson Kidd looking to go to the middle rope here. Khan back to his feet, but he's very wobbly and gets caught with a drop kick from the middle rope. Courtesy of Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd now hooks the leg here, but it's still only good for one. Tyson Kidd very, feeling very confident right now. He tries to go for a drop kick to the knee, does not get it. And now look at Khan targeting the knee of Tyson Kidd this time. And, oh! Another kick. Oh! And he worked. Oh! And got three strikes to the knee, and the third one was able to shot down Tyson Kidd. Now caught again back to the leg, back to the knee of Tyson. Every single those strikes are so deadly as you can tell. Tyson 
good job trying to trying to get some blood flowing back into that leg, but Khan is making that very difficult for him. As now you can see this is what I'm talking about. That he Khan likes to specifically target a body part. Whether that be an arm, a leg, he'll choose which body part he wants to go to. And he will focus his full attention on that one body part during most of the match. As you can see, it's paying dividends for Luke Khan right now. As he tries to go for the pin, but Tyson Kidd was able to kick out there, not even by the count of one. But that's not going to stop Khan here. He's just going to stomp on that leg. If I were Finn Balor, I'd be paying very close attention to the strategy because you know, he's going to have to... You know, Finn Balor has the coup de gras, that diving double foot stomp. You know, what is this from Luka Khan? Oh! He's tough. He's taking Tyson King completely off of the apron. And Khan... Full control. Finn Balor is going to have to look out when Khan is going to be looking to target the legs most likely of Finn Balor to take out the coup de gras. It's now Tyson Kidd trying to get back into this one, but Khan just takes him off the apron once again. The referee have to count of six, and now the ref having to back Luka Khan off. Tyson Kidd struggling to get to his feet. You can see Luka Khan just waiting for Tyson Kidd to get back into this one. Now on the apron and again Luka Khan. It's like he's toying with Tyson Kidd here. He can't get anything going. Wait a second, as soon as I say that blocks the punch from Luka Khan, he tosses Khan back into the ring. Now Tyson Kidd signaling for Time to get back up here now. What in the world is it? Springboard blockbuster from Tyson Kidd. Now Kidd looking for another springboard and hits an elbow this time. Could this be it? Will Luka Khan suffer a loss going into his match at turmoil? No, he does not. And now Tyson Kidd, what is he looking for? Going into that corner, and there's the drop kick he was looking for earlier. This time connects, and now Luka Khan could be in big trouble. Oh, look, there's the free leg of Luka Khan. Now trying to pick up Tyson, but Tyson fighting back. Kid now with an advantage. Wait a second, no, it's caught! Gets caught! And Khan has the leg hooked here, and immediately Tyson kick taps out. And you could see Khan's game plan worked perfectly here to work over most of the leg during the match. He caught Tyson Kidd with that, with that leg hook. And Tyson Kidd just immediately tapped out. And that's where the dangerous of Luka Khan comes into play. Right there. And then just the immediate tap out for Tyson Kidd, just too much pain, and Khan gets the victory. And with that, if I were Finn Balor, I'd be very, very careful when facing this man. I'd come up with a very smart strategy. Because you're looking at the master strategist in Luka Khan. And I think Finn Balor is going to find that out come turmoil.
Ladies and gentlemen, we got something special here planned for you tonight. We've got two triple threat matches. The first one being held right now. All six competitors from the ladder match competing in one of those triple threat matches. And now you can see the first one. Zaya Steele. She gets ready to take on two other participants in that ladder match to determine the number one, the new number one contender for the ZCW World Champion. Roman, the man who defeated Devin Anarchy to qualify for that ladder match on the last episode. Zaya Steele did the same last episode by defeating Johnny Gargano. If I were, uh, if I were Zaya Steele, I'd be very cautious with Roman Reigns. I think he and Elgin are the only two men with actual ladder match experience going into this ladder match at Terminal. So Roman Reigns and Elgin, they have experience going into ladder matches. No one else really does. You know, that's going to be one huge advantage for Roman Reigns because he knows what he's dealing with. I don't even think Roman Reigns is ready to take on five other competitors gunning for the same, for that same number one contender spot. Here comes Big Mike. Unbreakable Michael Elgin. He qualified two episodes ago when he defeated Leo Rush in a qualifying match. Michael Elgin, I would say, has the most momentum going in here. Not because only he beat Leo Rush in the qualifying match. Not only because he has previous ladder match experience, but you got to remember at this day we fight, he defeated John Cena in the middle of the ring. So that's a, that, in my mind, that's a huge momentum boost because, I mean, there have been very few men who have been able to defeat the man known as the franchise, John Cena. Elgin proved to be one of them at this day we fight. So, you know, the sky's the limit for Michael Elgin. As now Roman Reigns trying to go for a gut rig suplex, the same as what Elgin tried to do. It gets caught with a knee drop instead. Elgin now focusing his attention on Zaya Steele. Steele brings down Elgin with an arm drag and a job breaker. Zaya Steele fighting back though against Elgin. Roman Reigns deciding to back off a bit. Now what is still planning here? Oh my goodness gracious! A pile driver just dumping Elgin right on top of his head. Roman Reigns trying to take advantage, still having none of it, but Elgin just right back up right after that pile driver. Tries to go for a belly to belly, does not get it, still blocking it. it. Looked like Elgin was trying to go for a military press before Roman Reigns stopped it. Now Roman, oh, look, look at the elbows to the shoulder of Elgin. And now still talking a lot of trash and catches Roman Reigns with that snap German suplex. But that doesn't take Roman down for long as Roman trying to stay on the attack here. But oh, they are still with the shoulder block. Roman now picking him up back body drop. And still quickly getting out of there, trying to catch his breath. And now Elgin and Steele getting back at the same time. Elgin tries to go for a back suplex. Reigns does not get it. Reigns was able to counter it. 
And Brains counters it again, but this time, Zay is stealing a huge clothesline to Elgin. Roman Reigns with the advantage in this one. Roman Reigns, a former WWE World Heavyweight Champion, a former WWE Tag Team Champion. Oh my goodness, and the strength of Roman on clear display there with the deadlift powerbomb. Takes down Michael Elgin. Elgin responds with the knee lift, though. Now Elgin showing off his... Off his sheer size and strength here as now tries to go for a milita military press slam. Does not get it. Roman was able to counter it. Bayer still now looking to go into the pack. Uppercut there. No. Oh, what is this? Oh, the one and only from Zaya Steel. This could spell huge trouble for Michael Elgin, too. Oh, Reigns tried to rush back in, but a little late. But Elgin was able to kick out nonetheless. You know, still he has, along with his friend Xander. I mean, those are the two men with. Oh, whoa! Wait a minute. Before he could say anything, Steel gets caught with the Superman punch, courtesy of Roman Reigns. And Steel got rocked there. It's now Elgin. What could, be, what could he be looking for here? Oh, nothing. Needed a head by Reigns. He was able to get out of it. And now Reigns getting the gut-run suplex on Michael Elgin. And now it's still in Wait a minute! Steel, steel! With the Soul Eater elbow! The Soul Eater elbow! Connects on Roman Reigns! Could he have it here? No! I was going. I was going to say earlier that stealing, uh, as long as well as his friend uh, Xander, not only have no ladder match experience, but they also have less wrestling experience uh, from everyone else in this match. Everyone else in this uh, in that ladder match has at least. Um, I'm not entirely sure about Reigns, but. But everyone here at least has, I would say, more than five years of wrestling experience with Zaya Steel and Xander only have about two, three. Wait a second, look at this roll up here from Zaya Steel and no. Elgin tried to go for a power bomb. Zaya Steel was able to counter that into a into a nice sunset flip. And now is he looking for another soul leader elbow this time? To Michael Elgin. Can he hit it? Yes, he does. Elgin could be out here. But look at this. Reigns already back in the ring. One, two, and he breaks it up. And now Steele trying to get Reigns out of here. Oh, wait a second. No. Reigns fighting back. Tries to pick up Steele. Steele is able to push him out. Now Steele. Oh, my goodness. What an uppercut. This could be very bad news for Roman Reigns. Elgin, though, still in this one. Still can't forget about Elgin. Elgin with the jawbreaker. Isaiah Steele in good trouble. Oh, wait. No. Still fighting back. Oh, what is this? Belly to belly suplex to Elgin. Cover. Reigns breaking it up before it could even get to a two count. Still sending Reigns into the corner here. Oh no, what in the world is this? We got Reigns on the top rope. What in the world is Steel planning on doing here? Oh, is he looking for a superplex? Can he hit it? Yes, he does! The superplex from the top rope! But look at this, Reigns back to his feet, and a spear! What a spear! But Elgin, back into the ring, caught Reigns before Reigns could attempt a pinfall. Oh, and now Reigns setting up for another spear, this time to Michael Elgin, and he hits it. But Zayas still back to his feet. 
and he's fighting off Reigns. Big punch there. And now, look at this! Soul Eater Elbow! Once again! But he focuses attention on Elgin! To still pick up a victory on Elgin! And he does! Steel with a huge upset victory over both Michael Elgin and Roman Reigns. In all honesty, I did not see that one coming. Now look at this. Soul Eater elbow to the back of the head. I thought that one was over. But Reigns was able to kick out and then this superplex from the top rope. From Zaya Steel. What a win. What a win that is for the rookie. And he was able to hit the Soul Eater elbow on him. Focuses his attention on Elgin. And was still able to get the pinfall victory. That in the cap that is for Zaya Steel heading into this ladder match. Zaya Steel with an impressive victory over Elgin and Reigns in this triple threat. And who knows? We might be looking at the new number one contender in Zaya Steel come turmoil. That is a that is a very good possibility. We are back as we get ready for some women's action as Tessa Blanchard is getting ready to go one on one with the Panther Vanessa. The last time we saw Tessa Blanchard in the middle of a ZCW ring is when she was facing Deanna Perrazzo in the ZCW Women's Championship Tournament. Came up short against Perrazzo and Perrazzo hit her with a German suplex for a victory. So now Tessa Blanchard, she's got some ground to make up here. She's got to, she's got to secure a victory if she wants to, if she wants to really make a name for herself here in ZCW and find herself in a title and a title contingent spot in the future. Oh, 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 Anyone to be related to that monster beyond me, but nonetheless, Vanessa, you know, just like Tessa, she's in the same boat. The last time she was on ZCW, she uh, she came off a loss to uh, uh, the current ZCW Women's Champion, Elizabeth Frieza. Even though she does hold a victory. Uh, with Frieza after a tag team match at uh, Queens of Wrestling. Doesn't really have a singles victory here in ZCW, so we're looking at two women who are both looking for their first singles win here in ZCW and looking to gain at least just a little bit of momentum to try to 
find themselves in at least talks of a of a title shot in the future. As they lock up here, Vanessa with the wrist lock, and now taking down the knee. Now has more control of that arm here. Now Vanessa in full control. Wait a second, no! As soon as I say that, Tessa was able to reverse it and on her and now just wrenches back that arm. Not wasting any time here. Going after the arm of Vanessa. I like this aggressive side of Tessa Blanchard. Not wasting any time to go on the attack here. But wait, Vanessa now looking to respond back here. But Blanchard making it very difficult for her. Vanessa now trying to come back with some kicks here. Takes to the midsection. Oh, more strikes. Jeez, oh my goodness. Out of nowhere, these kicks are just flying around like they're nothing. Vanessa caught her there. Oh, but Vanessa got... I guess Tessa was able to move out of the way of whatever Vanessa was planning there. Now... Tessa Blanchard with a nice shoulder block takedown. And taking the time to taunt him, but Vanessa already back to her feet. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Oh, look at this. Look at this pin here from Vanessa. But no, only gets a two. Vanessa almost had it there with that, that roll up. But Tessa's still fighting back here, but it's caught. Monkey flip from Vanessa. The Panther in full control here. Now what is this? Gonna send Tessa Blanchard into the corner. Oh my goodness. And catches her with the senton. She just came at her back first and then transitioned into the into the uh Enziguri. But that was only good for two. Because now that one had to rock Tessa Blanchard silly. Now what is this? Oh, leg trip right on top of her head goes Tessa Blanchard. And oh, she squeezed the midsection. Vanessa is in full control. This isn't looking good for this Tessa Blanchard here, but Blanchard now looking to fight back. What in the world is this? Oh! Just an elbow to the chest there. Now, oh, what is this? What is this? Oh, that's a headlock driver! A headlock driver from Tessa Blanchard into the pin. Hooks the leg on Vanessa here. No! I'm surprised Vanessa was able to kick out of that, but it looks like Tessa is looking to finish this one off. Oh, wait a second, blocks the punch from Tessa Blanchard. Now what in the world is, oh my goodness, just caught her in the chin with that kick. And now, oh, what in the world is this? Oh, and a nice takedown there from the, uh, okay. Now going off the pin with the leg. Oh, but Tessa Blanchard was able to grab onto the rope there. The bottom rope. Nice ring awareness from Tessa Blanchard. As now Vanessa looking to gain control. There's now, oh wait a minute, Tessa Blanchard now is able to block one of those kicks. And now going for some strikes of her own here. Oh, but kicks away, kicks her away, does Vanessa. Now what is Vanessa looking for? Oh my goodness gracious! What in the world? It's over. My goodness, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Just look at this, this headlock driver is dropping Vanessa right on top of her head. And in any normal situation, this match would have been over after that, but Vanessa, with some resiliency, was able to kick out there. But then look at this. Look at this. It was a diving double knee face buster from Vanessa. 
I'm not entirely sure what she would what she would call that, but whatever it was, it got the job done. Well, that's one hell of a way to make a well a second impression here in ZCW. Vanessa picking up a very well needed singles victory over Tessa Blanchard. I'm uh, very excited to see what we see from her. That's Mil Muertes. Mil Muertes will be taking on the Young Bucks in a no disqualification handicap match between the two men that cost Mil Muertes uh, at another shot at the ZCW World Championship. Mil Muertes is facing Kenny Omega on the first episode back from this day we fight to determine a new number one contender for the ZCW World Championship. Kenny would get a little help from his friends, the Young Bucks, when the Young Bucks came out of nowhere from the crowd and delivered a couple of super kicks to Mil Muertes and was able to give Kenny Omega the cheap victory. And now Mil Muertes, over uh, the past couple of episodes, has been on a complete rampage. And this, and this man right here has been a victim of one of those assaults. Leo Rush has asked for this match after the last episode where Snow Muertes completely destroyed Leo Rush in the uh, uh, the back in the backstage. And now, oh wait a second, Leo Rush! Leo Rush not wasting any time, com going after Snow Muertes here. And you can see Leo Rush is all taped up after that assault that Snow Muertes. After that beating Mil Muertes gave Leo Rush last episode. And, you know, I got, I got, and, you know, props to Leo Rush for wanting to stick up for himself, wanting to fight and probably get some revenge over Mil Muertes, but this was not a smart idea at all. <laughs> Mil Muertes, he's already in the worst of moods. And this is a man that's never in a good mood. He is not letting up on Leo Rush whatsoever. It's a match that Leo Rush wanted! But I'm not entirely sure this is... This was a smart decision on Leo Rush's part. As you can see, Mil Muertes... He's still angry. He's still furious about not being number one contender for the World Championship. And Leo Rush is only making it worse for himself! A oh, huge power bomb. I don't know what Leo Rush could possibly do here to counter this assault from Mil Muertes. Oh, wait a second! As soon as I say that, Leo Rush with the roll up. Whoa! Only getting a one count. 
And now another kick. And more kicks. And now, gonna take Mil Muertes to the outside. Oh, wait a second. Look out for Leo Rush here! Tope Con Hilo! Right on top of Mil Muertes, but I'm not entirely sure if that was a good idea. You have to remember, Leo Rush is still injured. As you can tell by him being all bandaged up here, but that doesn't seem to stop Leo Rush whatsoever. He wants a piece of Mil Muertes. And he is looking to do damage here. And now, oh my goodness, gets caught. Samoan drop from Mil Muertes. And I think the, the fire has been put out. Courtesy of the man of a thousand deaths. And one, one, oh! Oh, no. Okay, yeah. He's, he's got to be out. But Mil Muertes, oh no. He's doing it again. Another pile driver. Oh, right on top of his head. Mil Muertes. He, he is just, he is, he is just delivering a beating to this poor man. This poor, poor man. And if I were the Young Bucks, I'd be paying close attention because this might be your future come turmoil. This might be your fate, your destiny come turmoil. Mess with the bulls. Get the horns! A huge choke slam from Mil Muertes. And Leo Rush is not moving whatsoever. As now Mil Muertes picks up Leo Rush, has him. Looked up here, flatliner. A flatliner from Mil Muertes. So Leo Rush and Leo has to be. There's no way Leo is complete. I think Leo's actually busted open after that flatliner, but Mil Muertes not done. He's not done. He sets him up for another flatliner. Just pin him. I think the man has suffered enough. This time Mil Muertes listening to my advice. Thank the merciful God, this one is over. Leo Rush, he's got a lot of heart. He's got a lot of balls to want to, you know, continue to go after Mil Muertes. Even just looking for a measure, just a short measure of payback after what Mil Muertes did to him last episode. But, you know, in the end, I still gotta say, that was not a smart idea from Leo Rush. He was completely taken apart here by Mil Muertes. That huge choke slam. And at that point, Leo Rush was no longer moving. And you could see that second flatliner from Mil Muertes. And this one was over. Hey, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Look! Look! Get the, the Young Bucks! The Young Bucks! Shots to the back of the head, the Young Bucks! We haven't seen them since the season premiere of CCW on YouTube. Ever since King Omega beat Mil Muertes, we have not seen the Young Bucks, but the Young Bucks... Oh, making their presence known before turmoil, as once again they're getting the drop on Mil Muertes. Mil Muertes was not completely focused. And in the end, the Young Bucks once again taking advantage of Mil Muertes. And Mil Muertes trying to get back to his feet here. And a super kick from Matt Jackson. And now Nick turning him around and another super kick. 
Now Matt has the chair. Oh no, he's got it wrapped around the neck of Mil Muertes. Oh, and now it, Nick! Stomping it and probably crushing the throat of Mil Muertes. Now what are they doing? Nick getting rid of one of the chairs. And now another super kick from Matt Jackson. And now Matt getting rid of another chair here. And Mil Muerta is trying to get back to his feet. And another super kick. The Young Bucks pick their spot. They pick their moment. And right now their plan is working out the pure perfection. As Mil Muerta is getting completely taken apart by the Young Bucks yet again. Now what are they doing? Oh, kick and another kick and another, oh, two super kicks, double super kick. Mil Muertes cannot stop this double team tandem. Of the young bucks here now are what in the world and another super kick. And the Young Lucks. They're just taking Mil Muertes apart. What in all oh, they're looking. Are they looking for an Indy Taker? An Indy Taker to Mil Muertes! The Young Bucks have taken out have taken out Mil Muertes yet again. But will there be hell to pay? For the Young Bucks come turmoil. Only time will tell, but it's not looking good for the Young Bucks. If Mil Muertes is 100% come turmoil. But I think the Young Bucks have made sure that won't be the case. Second triple threat match of the night. And Xander will take on Moose and Shinsuke Nakamura. And that, look at this. Xander wearing the same color scheme as his tag team partner, Isaiah Steele. It's a little bit interesting. I'm going to let Xander get ready to take on two formidable foes here in the middle of that ring. And this man being one of them. Oh, here's a perfect fuck. Moose! The story uh, with Moose here has been a very interesting one. As, well, originally, Kazushka Okada was supposed to be in a qualifying match against Matt Seidel for a spot in this ladder match, but Okada was switched out for uh, his uh, 
His employer, uh, his bodyguard, his enforcer, whatever you want to call it, Moose, at the very last minute, uh, when we found out that Okada had decided not to show up to ZCW, and, it, and from what I, from my understanding, is refusing to return to ZCW until he gets a shot at the ZCW World Champion. The ZCW World Championship that he feels he rightfully deserves after he defeated Brock Lesnar at this day we fight. So, chances to say we're not going to be seeing Okada for a while in the ZCW ring. episode when he defeated the oppression and what was a was just a hard hitting affair between the two of them. And if you saw that match you have to know that Nakamura's back can't be in the best of shape. I mean he was just completely taken apart. That back was taken apart by the oppression. He just focused on the spine and the majority of the match. But Nakamura you know, even throughout the pain that the impression was delivering onto him, was able to find a victory. He was able to hit the Kinshasa and to secure him a spot in this ladder match. If he's gonna, but if he has a bad back going into this ladder match, chances, chances to say that, you know, there's a very low chance he might not, he might not uh, come out of that ladder match the victor. Hell, he might not come out of that match walking by the end of it. You know Nakamura, you know he's a tough SOB. He's looking to prove that as he goes, you know, he goes up against two opponents here in this triple threat match. Xander, Moose, and Nakamura going at it. And here we go. Reference the bell in our second triple threat match of the night has taken has already taken a taken place is now Moose was able to hit a quick DDT on Xander Nakamura catches him with a back suplex Nakamura trying to go after Xander Xander trying to go after what in the world what ah uh, Excuse me I just see a near 300 pound Moose a sunset flip power bomb on Shinsuke Nakamura? Is that what I just saw? And now Moose going after uh, Xander. I'm sorry, I'm still taking aback about uh, the, the sunset flip power bomb. Moose of all people! It's now Moose not paying any attention. Nakamura was not able to catch him here. Now look at this, what in the world is Moose picking up here? Catches Xander, hits him with a pop-up power bomb. And now looking for a DDT on Nakamura. Nakamura though, fighting back against Moose. And now Nakamura catches, oh, what a kick from Shinsuke. Now Moose could be in some big trouble and a stomp to the midsection from Nakamura. There's one thing that Moose and Xander are gonna have to look out for. It's those kicks from Nakamura and that Kinshasa. That Kinshasa can come from anywhere at any time. And if he hits it, that's that's the end of the match. Game over. It's now Xander looking to take advantage of Moose. It's Nakamura rolls out of the ring. And oh, look at the strength. He like nothing. Like nothing. Moose just, he just puts down Xander. But Xander now, not going to let that hinder him. Trying to come back at Moose. Xander definitely the smallest man in this match. But he's 
been the smallest man in pretty much every match he's ever been in, but that's never stopped Xander one bit. And Xander gives it 110% every single time he's in the ring. You can call him cocky, you can call him brash, but that doesn't matter. It's now off of that standing Meteora. Only gets a two count. Call him cocky, call him brash. You can say he's got a huge ego, but that doesn't matter. The talent that Xander has is completely unbelievable. Now, oh, wait a second. The last episode! The last episode! The Statman Driver on Moose! But Nakamura was already back to his feet, and Xander was not able to capitalize. And now Xander going after Nakamura. Oh, and now what is he doing? He's lining up Nakamura here. Now, what the world? Oh, my goodness! Trying to go for a springboard corkscrew moonsault. Did not get it. As now, both Nakamura and Xander are just trading blows with one another. And Xander catches Nakamura with the jawbreaker. And now focuses his attention on Moose. And hits another final episode on Moose. That's two Snapman Drivers cover. Two! What? How? How was Moose able to kick out of two of those? Xander now! What is this? I'm trying to go for a springboard drop kick, but Moose was able to sidestep it! Moose with the punch! Oh wait a second! I think Nakamura is trying to go for a, a DDT. Moose was able to stop that from happening. That was, oh! Double jumping cutter! From Nakamura and Moose to Xander! And now, oh, I think Nakamura's trying to go for a belly to belly. And now Moose in control. That backbreaker just tosses Nakamura over his head. Pure strength of Moose on full display here. However, oh, he gets a one count. Are you kidding me? Moose is only able to get a one count off of that. Now Xander back in the ring. Xander tried to go after Nakamura. But Moose stopped it from happening. And now, oh, what in the world is this? Xander has Nakamura playing Buster. Oh, my goodness. And now, what in the world is this? No, Moose fights back. Moose fighting out of it. And now Moose up in the air and down goes Xander. And this is not looking good for Xander whatsoever. A huge lifting DDT. One, two, no, and a kick out there from Xander. Moose now. Whoa! Kinshasa! The Kinshasa from Nakamura! Two! And it's over! What did I tell you? What did I tell you? That King Shasa can come from out of nowhere. At any time. Any place. Nakamura. With a big victory in this triple threat match. Now look at this. Rock kick straight to the chest of Moose. And then right here, that was the second final episode from Xander that should have put the match away, but oh! It was not to be with that King Shasa, that knee to the head was enough for Nakamura to get the three count and the victory. So with that, Zayasil and Nakamura have victories Going into this ladder match, will that provide them with both with a little momentum going into it? We are definitely going to find out come turmoil.
Champions Darren Payne and Baron Corbin. And you remember at the beginning of the show, Kota Ibushi came out of nowhere, delivered some well needed payback against Ambrose. And he kicked him in the back of the head and delivered a sit out last ride powerbomb. You don't know what I'm talking about. On the season premiere of DCW uh, on YouTube, Ambrose unintentionally cost Ibushi uh, at, Z at the ZCW Pride Championship. And Sammy Callahan. And you know that Ambrose, he's, he's got to be furious and absolutely livid after what Abushi did to him at the beginning of the show, but. He's going to have to put that aside if he wants to get a victory over the tag team champions. And, which, like, in tag team, in tag team matches, I don't think Darren Payne and Barry Coleman have been beaten yet. something that I uh, that no in a in a way I would have to agree with. He said that the reason that Darren Payne and him have held those titles isn't because they've been uh, their best friends because they spent countless years training with one another. It isn't because they've been tag team for a while. They have the, it isn't because they've been tag team for a while. It's because, you know, when you got two men that are as big as those two, you know, when they come together as a unit, it's hard to stop them from getting whatever they want. And it's even harder to take away of, it's even harder to take away something that they already have and what they have are those ZCW tag team titles. said it before and I'll say it again this man has been a complete you know success story for ZCW I mean when you talk about one of the most dominant men in professional wrestling today I think the name Darren Payne might have to come up because this man has been absolutely unstoppable ever since his debut success in DCW as they are the first ever holders of the ZCW tag team titles and have held those titles for over a year but will that title reign come to an end come turmoil when they face a team that they don't even know about yet and already some, some questionable tactics from Kota Ibushi and Dean Ambrose as Ambrose just tagged himself into the match not even, not even letting Kota Ibushi start this match off. 
That's not Ambrose just viciously going after Baron Corbin. Look at these strikes from Ambrose to Corbin. And I guess if he's not able to let out his anger on Abushi, he's going to take it out on one half of the CCW Tag Team Champions. That just so being Baron Corbin right now. He who slaps to the face and a drop kick to the chest. And so far, this match is not going Corbin's way. Ambrose going to send Corbin into the corner here. Oh, and a forearm. And follows that up with a nice bulldog. Like I said in the beginning, how are Ambrose and the booth going to hold this? Ambrose being the man, being the, being the sole reason why probably why Abushi doesn't have that CCW Pride Championship right now. And uh, Abushi being the man who attacked Ambrose at the beginning of the show earlier on the night. Look at Corbin just firing back at Ambrose. Now Ambrose the one in trouble. start this match off, start the match off hot, but Corbin just, just setting that fire out, now Payne looking to do more damage, the 300 plus pound monster from New Orleans, Louisiana, now, oh my goodness, he simply blocked that punch of Ambrose and came right back at him with a huge headbutt, now what is this? He strikes to the chest. Oh, come on! And now just fighting the head of Ambrose. And a clothesline to the back. And another one. This one taking him down. Now oh, Ambrose the one in huge trouble. Pain has about, like, I would say 100. I, I'm just more biting to the top of the head. Pain has about 100 pounds on Ambrose. So Ambrose had a huge disadvantage. And so would Abushi if he was able to get into this one. Ambrose now sticking to what brought him to the dance here. Those this non-stop assault. He's trying to go for some clotheslines, but they're not doing a thing to, to Darren Payne. This pain is just shrugging them off like they're nothing. Ambrose trying to go for another one, but gets caught with the spine buster from Darren Payne. And Ambrose can, is just getting taken apart by both Corbin and Payne. There is very little he can do right now. Stomping a mud hole into Ambrose does Darren Payne. And now look, look at this, just raking the eyes. These these two monsters are just doing whatever they want to Ambrose, and Ambrose can do very little to stop it. So you see, he just got a huge boot to the chest for a good measure. And Abushi's just looking on like he doesn't care. Like, there is no love loss between Ambrose and Abushi, as you can tell. Ambrose is right there at any time and Lucy could probably tag himself out, but I think he just enjoys watching Ambrose getting completely taken apart by Payne and Corbin at this point. And Payne pocket some trash to Abushi. Ambrose, I don't even know how Ambrose is still conscious at this point. And now Payne sending. Oh, wait a second, Abushi tagging himself in, finally! Now look at that, this is a major disadvantage that Abushi has. But that's not stopping Abushi whatsoever. Now striking away at Pain, but again, it's, it doesn't look like it's doing much effect to the big man. Tojo Abushi has one of the hardest kicks I've ever seen from a professional wrestler, and that still looks like it ain't doing nothing to bear a damn pain or so I thought! Pain trying to go for a spine buster! Obushi countered that into a tornado DDT! And now Obushi off her own springboard moonsault! Copper here! 
only getting a one count. But Ibushi was able to take advantage of the situation at hand and a drop kick trying to take down Payne, but it's not working. And an arm drag! And oh, look at this corkscrew moonsault! Standing corkscrew moonsault! One! Two! Oh, and a kick out! Ambrose tried to stop it, but Payne was still able to kick out in a huge penalty kick from Kota Ibushi. Oh, but Corbin now. Oh, and a huge punch there. Ibushi tried to go after Corbin, and Corbin took advantage. And now Payne, what in the world is this? Oh, my goodness! And now Ibushi the one in trouble. A huge boot to the head. Payne is just not letting Ibushi get back to his feet. Ibushi is trying, and every single time Payne just, just kicks him down. And a huge standing lariat from Darren Payne. It's just a beatdown. It's a mugging from Payne and Corbin. There's now Ibushi trying to fight back here. Now going off the ropes, gets caught, and a single-handed spine buster. That's just pure strength there from Ben Corbin. Bushy being taken apart here. And a huge clothesline. Well, what could Abushi do at this point? He's, he's, oh my goodness, he's getting his bell rock. I mean, he's getting his bell rung, I should say. By Baron Corbin and Darren Payne. And now Ambush, at least trying to help out just a little bit here. But all gets caught from Corbin. Down goes Ambush, but that might have given Abushi oh, enough time to come up with the strategy as he hits Corbin with the Pele kick. What? There's no way. There's no way. Is he thinking of that sit out last right pull him? He can't hit this on Corbin. And now you can see Corbin was not going to let that happen. He was not going to let that happen. Corbin now going to send Abushi off the ropes here. And catches Abushi. Deep six from Baron Corbin. And down goes Ambrose. Ibushi looking for a tag, but Ambrose has been taken out. Now Corbin, what is he thinking of here? Has him. Has Ibushi, and now... And then, oh! A different version of a Falcon arrow from Baron Corbin here, and no. The fact that Ibushi is still able to kick out just shows you the, the heart that Ibushi has. Hart's only going to take him so far, especially when you're on a match with Corbin and Kane. Tries to go for another Falcon there, but does not hit it. It's now Ibushi. One, one. Are you kidding me? Half and half! Suplex on Baron Corbin! And now Ibushi! Close line! Another close line! And a thrust kick! Ibushi now in control! Tells Corbin to get up. Okay, oh, there's the kick. There's the huge kick. Is he thinking of a Phoenix splash? Oh, but Payne right there to make sure that doesn't happen. Payne stopped it in a huge shoulder block from Corbin. And now Ambrose again trying to do some work here. And there's a double action. I think he caught a Bushi as well. Not sure if that was by accident or if he meant for that to happen. But either way, it took out Corbin, and now he's looking to take out Payne here. Oh, but Payne fighting back. And now Corbin and Abushi back to their feet. And now what is. Oh, look at this! Poison Frankensteiner! Poison Frankensteiner! And this could be what Abushi needed! This could be. What a bushy in it now! Corbin with an arm drag and a huge clothesline from Corbin. 
Pouring out, picking up a bushi. A punch to the head. And another punch. And more punches. Away is taking the bushi, coming back with a punch of his own. And now bushi going off the, the road. Oh! What in the world catches? Abushi, that's Corbin! And now, oh, are you kidding me? End of days! The end of days for Corbin! And down goes Ambrose! One, two, it's over. And again, Corbin and Dan Payne still undefeated in tag team matches. I guess you could give this one to the fact that Ambrose and Abushi did not work well as a team. I mean, those two did not want to tag out to each other at all. They wanted to do their own thing. They weren't, you know, at an even playing field. They clearly weren't on the same page. In the end, Payne and Corbin just ate those two alive. Then Corbin caught him in midair and then turns him around into the end of days. And that would be enough to secure the victory. And once again, Payne and Corbin undefeated in tag team matches. To the opponents of Darren Payne and Baron Corbin, good luck, because you are damn sure going to need it when facing these two. Mac Wires may have picked the team, but I'm not sure if there is a team out there that can stand against Corbin and Payne. See how Bush is still down on the mat and Ambrose getting back up. No. Oh, look at this! Ambrose not showing any mercy, not showing any compassion to Kota Abushi. And now Ambrose looking for some revenge after what Abushi did earlier on in the night. And oh, there's a huge knee lift! And Ambrose. Doesn't look like Ambrose done. And now sets up a bushy for the year for the dirty deeds. The dirty deeds from Dean Ambrose lays out Kota Bushi. Ambrose and Abushi were not able to get along here tonight. Ambrose and then didn't care.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost finished with this episode of ZCW on YouTube, but just like any other episode before our next pay-per-view, it is now time to run down the card for ZCW Turmoil. In the night which is supposed to be absolute pandemonium, Kind of figure out what matches you're gonna see. Right now, you're listening to the official theme song for Turmoil. It is Legacy by the Band Coded. It's from their EP, All Systems to Go. It is available on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever else music is sold. Go check them out. Candice LeRae takes on Lauren Richfield in a tables match. These two have been going out at it ever since the ZCW Women's Championship Tournament. Can Candice LeRae get a second victory over the Canadian Amazon? A match that was just made official by Mac Waters. Dean Ambrose will take on Ibushi, and the winner will become the new number one contender for the ZCW Pride Championship. Finn Balor and Luka Khan go at it in a sort of rematch from This Day We Fight. Balor said, at This Day We Fight, Khan faced the demon, and now at Turmoil, he'll face the man, Finn Balor. A no disqualification handicap match as Mil Muertes takes on the Young Bucks. The Young Bucks cost Mil Muertes another chance at the ZCW World Championship, and Mil Muertes is looking to get rid of the Young Bucks once and for all. The tag team titles are on the line as Payne and Corbin go up against a mystery tag team in the favor of Mac Waters. Payne and Corbin have been going through the tag team division and now they face off against a team that's not even signed by ZCW. It's an I quit match as AJ Styles takes on Kevin Owens to end this personal rivalry that's been going on since, well, since Battle of the Gods. Can Styles get Owens to say, I quit? It's a number one contender ladder match for the ZCW World Championship as Xander, Elgin, Moose, Reigns, Nakamura, and Steele all fight it out to determine the new number one contender for the ZCW World Championship. And finally, our main event, the ZCW World Championship is on the line as Kenny Omega takes on Seth Rollins. Both men at the top of their game as of right now. We are going to find out who truly is the best in the world. right now making his way down to the ring. The cleaner Kenny Omega, the challenger for the ZCW World Championship come turmoil. And also the man who delivered quite a beating to Seth Rollins on the last episode of ZCW on YouTube. Has a mic in his hand so I can only guess that he's got a couple of things to say quite possibly to his opponent, the ZCW World Champion, Seth Rollins.
Uh oh. Well, I didn't think we'd be seeing this man tonight, especially what Kenny Omega did to him on the last episode. But there's the VCW World Champion, Seth Rollins. He doesn't have his belt with him, but he's got his gear. And he's looking to go on the attack on Kenny Omega. The man that assaulted him on the last episode. The man who gave him a one-winged angel. The outside of the ring. Seth Rollins feeling and sent after that. After that whole ordeal on the last episode. Now looking to deliver some well-needed payback against Kenny Omega. It's Rollins, he's on a rampage. He's on a non-stop assault on Kenny Omega. Now Rollins now just hammering away on Kenny. The way you have to say it, Kenny should have seen this one coming. Seth Rollins is not a man who forgives and forgets. And now Rollins sending Kenny Omega over the guardrail out into the crowd here. And this one is getting dangerous. And a blow to the back of that and a blow to the top of it. Seth Rollins now coming all the way back here. Kenny Omega could be in big trouble. A huge need from Seth. Now what is Seth thinking? Seth, uh-oh. He's got Kenny near that table. And Kenny could be in big trouble. And now, oh wait a second, no, Kenny now. Oh, a huge DDT right on the concrete floor. Now Kenny Omega has a, has a trash can. Oh my goodness, it just bounces it, bounces it off of the top of the head of Seth Rollins. These men are absolutely looking to destroy one another. You know, Kenny sending Seth back. Now a huge punch, and there it sends Kenny back over the top of the guardrail. Now Kenny looking to follow suit, but Seth now sending him over back into the crowd. But Kenny fighting back, and a huge shot just sends him across the announce table. These two men. It's like they want to take each other out before turmoil. And now Kenny now has Seth. And now Seth could be on a receiving end of some punishment just like last episode. But Ron's making sure that doesn't happen. Ron's making sure that he gives the same amount of punishment as he received. And now Kenny looks at me. Take a beating! A huge super kick from Seth Rollins. Straight to the chin of Kenny Omega. This isn't looking good for Omega here. Rollins telling him to get back to his feet. A huge deep to the top of the head. And now it looks like Seth is setting him up for a pedigree probably. A pedigree from Seth Rollins. Oh no! Kenny caught the leg! Oh, and a huge Savant kick from Kenny Omega. And this could smell and this could spell bad news for Seth Rollins. Oh V trigger! From Kenny Omega! And now Omega signaling for that one winged angel. That one winged angel. Can he hit it once again? Oh, Rollins, no way, Rollins fighting back. Rollins fighting out of it. And now Kenny in big trouble. What in the world? Oh, curb stop, curb stop, curb stop. We saw Seth Rollins pull that out when he defeated Mil Huertes. At this day we fight. And this time, he hits it on Kenny Omega. And now Seth just picking him back up. Probably gonna add the finishing touches to this with the pedigree and he hits it. Will this be the result we see 
Code Turmoil. Will Seth Rollins defeat Kenny Omega? Or will we see a new era in, here in ZCW? The era of the cleaner. Well, with that comes turmoil. And ladies and gentlemen, I have been Zaya Morgan. This has been ZCW on YouTube, and I will see you at turmoil. <laughs>